What is going on ladies and gentlemen, it is Kevin with Optimized Essentials and in today's video I'm going to be discussing with you pooping essentials, all right? How to fix your digestion, your constipation, your digestive issues, your bloatedness, how to get rid of that because as someone who is into the health and wellness world, the health as a health and wellness fanatic myself, I would say out of the six foundational health principles which include drinking enough water, eating good food, moving your body, getting in enough sleep, using your thoughts, using your mind and breathing. The two that I need the most work on is digestion and also sleep. Reason being, I have a tendency to overeat good food. So even though I poop every day, uh, every now and then I find myself backed up meaning instead of po pooping three times in the morning, which I typically poop out all my meals at once, I only poop out one. And I know why that happens. It's because I overeat, okay? I rush, uh, first I rush how much I eat, like I eat really quickly and then I eat a lot. So I'm gonna discuss with you guys all of the, the tips and the tricks, all of the reasons why you're constipated, uh, why your gut feels like it's always bloated and it's not working well, and then how to fix it. Because quite frankly, I know why when I'm when I get constipated. I, I know exactly what I did, what I ate, and I still do it because of something I'm gonna address later. For those people who emotionally eat or who eat out of boredom or eat out of loneliness or eat out of emotional issues, which is a symptom, I'm gonna address that as well because we have to understand why. Why are you constipated? Why do you have digestive issues? Why do you have what you have going on? If you haven't noticed, I'm at home, switch up the environment a little bit better, a little bit, but uh, being at home puts me at ease and it, it puts me, my digestive system at ease too. So with all that said, one more thing actually before I get started, the funny thing was in college, I actually did my first poem, my spoken word or like my poetry on constipation because quite frankly, everyone, it's something that everyone does, but no one talks about, right? Like, like sex, it's like taboo, right? But everyone does it, so what's, so what's so taboo about it? Let's talk about how to fix your digestion, okay? So let's get into the root causes, the troubleshooting of why this happens, okay? So you're more aware of the activities that trigger your indigestion, your constipation, your leaky gut, your gut dysbiosis, etc. okay? So the very first thing you want to understand is gut issues like gastrointestinal uh, inflammation, GI inflammation, meaning your gut literally swells up and it gets inflamed, GI inflammation, um, leaky gut, irritable bowel syndrome, all of this is caused because of certain foods that we're eating, okay? So meaning GMO foods like wheat and corn and uh, like corn syrup, uh, things that they put into cereal, wheat, white bread, the four devils, the, uh, it's uh, sugar, right? Dairy, which is another one on the list. Uh, table sugar, and there's one more white, white devil that I'm missing, but I'll, I'll post a picture of that. Anytime you're eating certain things that are GMO'd, meaning they're, they're genetically modified and they're foreign to your body, anytime you're eating things that are sprayed with pesticides, meaning chemicals and fertilizers that is toxic to your body, your, as soon as you it gets into your gut and into your bloodstream, your body is like, whoa, what is going on? You know, it, it spazzes out because there's chemicals in there that is potentially harmful to your body. So to protect it, what ends up happening is your body brings blood flow to it, swells up, but that also means that it prevents you from literally digesting well and also absorbing the food and the more toxic sludge and chemicals you have in there, the more you open yourself up to uh, gut permeability, meaning there's literally, that's how leaky gut happens. Uh, it opens you up to indigestion. You have indigested proteins, undigested proteins, so your gut starts to ferment and rot. It's called gut rot, right? Think about just gunk in your, in your gut. That's something you don't want. And then, uh, so I covered, yeah, pesticides, dairy, dairy is one of them because look, think about it this, there's certain, uh, it's lactose and casein, casein and, uh, dairy products that can potentially irritate your gut lining if your body isn't foreign to it. But my theory, my, my, what I suspect is that because they feed the cows 
low quality feed, as in they feed it GMO corn, GMO wheat and grains, because the cow is stressed out and toxic and nasty. And think about this, if you eat dairy products, think about the milk, of, you're not just consuming the milk of one cow, you're consuming the milk of multiple cows, all right? The liquid of the bodily fluids of the cow, okay, of not just one, but all of the cows combined. And not just that, they are sick, stressed, depressed, diseased cows, okay? If you're getting low quality milk from low quality cows, be damn sure you're gonna have a messed up gut. But hey guys, I, I'm, I'm gonna be a hypocrite here because when I drink my coffee, I like to put some grass-fed butter. I mean, even though it's grass-fed and like high quality, every, if I drink it, if I drink too much dairy, it, it bloats me. So I, hey, if you're gonna suffer the consequences, watch this video and take care of your body. Learn how to tune up. As long as you know what to do and you do it to repair, I can't, I can't get on your case because I, I, I overeat and I, I'm, I'm, my deadly sin is gluttony, right? I have a tendency to overdo things. Okay, so the second thing in terms of gut issues is bacterial dysbiosis, meaning you have a, a bacterial imbalance, a bacterial overgrowth, and that can happen from ingesting chemicals, pesticides, things that have bacteria on it and you didn't wash it good enough. So anytime your bacteria, your 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 people are out of balance, your gut is going to be out of balance, you're going to be bloated, etc. Okay, so those are the main things, all right? Toxic food, GMO foods, things that have been modified. So when you eat muffins, when you eat like potato chips with inflammatory vegetable oils, which is another one I didn't include, but any type of uh, low quality vegetable oil like canola oil, palm oil, some kernel seed oil, rapeseed oil, cotton seed oil, uh, corn oil, all of this is garbage. If you eat it, it's gonna fuck your gut up, okay? Like, I, that's the best word I can use because anytime I put this stuff into my body, oh my God, my gut feels just horrendous, okay? So, no bueno, okay? So, that is the most important thing when it comes down to indigestion, when it comes down to constipation, when it comes down to messing your gut microbiome up. Stay away from pesticides and chemicals. Stay away from GMO foods. Don't eat the corn, the soy, the wheat. I mean, soy might be okay if it's uh, non-GMO verified and organic, but um, wheat and, uh, and, um, and a corn, those two are gonna be crazy, and vegetable oils, those three are gonna mess you up, okay? And then after that, we have lack of exercise, okay? Especially at this current time in life, a lot of people have desk jobs, they don't move, um, they're inside of their house all day. If you don't exercise your body, you cause stagnation, energy stagnation, okay? Meaning energetically, you are blocked because the chi flow, the blood flow that is you know circulating throughout your body, when it doesn't get pumped, your gut is just sluggish. You have a slow metabolism. So you wanna make sure you exercise and I would say, depending on your level of fitness, you can exercise vigorously, but strategically, don't just go out there and start sprinting. Build up to it, do something with intelligence, okay? And then next one, not enough water, not drinking enough water. A lot of people nowadays drink like two cups of these a day, or maybe three, and they're like, oh, that's enough. If, if you're drinking just filtered water and you're just having a shitty, you know, diet, that probably might not be enough. Watch my video on HDO hacks, how to like, you know, improve your hydration because if you just drink filtered water, that's not exactly the best. You wanna enhance and charge your water. And then you also you wanna drink enough of it during the day. I would recommend, uh, I believe the, the, it was a half your body weight in ounces. So that's typically about two liters f per day for someone, maybe more if you're active. And then here we go. Here's some other interesting stuff. Mental, emotional issues, okay? Anytime you are stress eating or you are not feeling secure, you're feeling uh, like you got emotional issues, emotional baggage that you haven't taken care of, you have imbalances in your root and sacral chakra, which is the energy centers of, I'm not gonna pull the camera down because my, my tripod is messed up. Energy centers here and like in the, <laughs> in the like uh, coccyx, the sacral bone, Energy gets stored there. It's our primal energy center, right? When we're disconnected with our sense of self, our belonging, our groundedness in the earth, 
when we don't have a tribe, when we don't feel safe because we've been abused mentally, physically, you know, not spiritually, but abused, uh, tra traumatized, abused uh, physically, sexually, trauma gets stuck in those energy centers. And when you have a wonky sacral chakra, wonky uh, root chakra, that is gonna cause emotional issues and emotional issues will cause you to eat, to binge on certain things and that will mess up your gut, okay? Now I'm gonna make another video discussing the elements of binge eating, of overeating, eating disorders because although I can't say I'm 100% you know, clear on all of the exact reasons why eating disorders come about, I've accumulated enough puzzle pieces through my own experience, quite frankly, you know, I thank God for blessing me with that experience of uh, overeating, binge eating, indulging, because if I don't go through it, I won't understand it. So I'm gonna make a video on that and explain why we binge eat, why we emotionally eat, what we're trying to do, what, what kind of, why we're trying to, why we're engaging those behaviors. So stay tuned for that. So emotional issues, anytime you're stressed out when you're eating, you're watching TV, you're like boom, being inundated, the energy flow in the body, it doesn't go into your gut. It goes into your senses, okay? When you're being inundated, by watching something on your phone, you're, you're not activating, you're not fully relaxing into your parasympathetic nervous system, okay? Your parasympathetic nervous system is your rest and digest, okay? Rest, digest, assimilate. But your sympathetic nervous system, which is stress, flight or fight, when you trigger that, the blood flow goes from the core away from your digestion into your limbs because it is preparing yourself to run, to, you know, if you're, you can't repair and digest and, you know, fight a virus off if you're getting chased by a bear, right? We all know that, that uh, overused analogy, but it's true. It doesn't necessarily mean all of your energy is being, being diverted to your limbs. That's not it. Like if you're, it, it's like a teeter-totter, okay? The more energy, think of it like a, like a, like a, like a pipe hose that has two splits, the more flow you have, that, that valve, the more flow you have going to the sympathetic nervous system, the less that is going into the opposite, the parasympathetic. When you're eating, it's best to not have stimulation around in a quiet environment. That's why, you know, I'm filming at home. That's not why I'm filming, I'm just at home right now. But when I'm at home, my energy is expanded. Everything is flowing, everything is relaxed because I can relax into myself. I can relax into my body. I can just relax and be safe. So then my digestion and everything is operating at its optimum capacity. But when I'm at work and I'm sitting on my ass for eight hours a day and I have no friends to hang out with and you know emotionally I'm not satisfied, then if I overeat and stress my body out because I'm eating out of stress, uh, then ends up what ends up happening is I get emotionally stagnant or uh, energetically stagnant in here. So that is how energy uh, starts to coagulate or your, how your, your, uh, your body starts to get constipated because one, you're not moving enough, two, you're eating shit food, and then three, you're not, you know, you're, over, you're overdoing it because you're not emotionally satisfied, okay? So with those most things gone out of the way, uh, there's also toxicity, which ties into, you know, heavy metal poisoning and all that other stuff. Basically, when you're overly toxic, your body is gonna be stressed. Anytime you're stressed, that's gonna cause indigestion. That's gonna hamper your ability to digest, okay? So with all that being said, let's get into how to actually fix your digestion because I know I covered a lot of groundwork, but very, very important stuff. You need to be deeply aware of these factors in order to control them, okay? Like I know how to fix my digestion because I've gone through each and every one of these, right? I've eaten toxic food, I've emotionally eight many times, I've overindulged, I've sat on my ass for way too long so that my digestion, digestion doesn't work well. I have been in stressful environments where I'm not flowing, meaning I'm not in touch with my higher self and I'm constantly stuck, emotionally stuck, and that causes digestion. So a lot of this I've experienced with, but here's how you actually fix it, okay? So number one, this is the day of. You gotta prepare, you, be prepared to spend two days to fix your digestion. The day of is what you do before, and the morning of, hopefully, if you've done what you did right correctly in the day of, you have a nice, fluid, great shit. Because the other day, I, I was inspired to make this video because I evacuated completely, I pooped everything out, 
uh, and I just felt really good. So I was like, you know, maybe I should make a video on teaching how, people how to fix digestion, okay? So here's the thing. The first step is you want to eat a fuck ton of raw vegetables, okay? Excuse my French. I know I, I gotta stop swearing, but you gotta eat a shit ton of raw, raw vegetables, okay? Now, depending on how unhealthy you are, this may not be the best idea. Like if you're, I mean, it can't, it can't, what's the worst that can happen, okay? Just just do it, okay? So I recommend getting a box, those tray vegetables, if you have trouble eating raw vegetables with the dip. Hopefully the dip doesn't have too much guar gum, curry, curry and like a bunch of nasty chemicals. What you could do is you can buy a relatively healthy a dip or make one yourself, get one of those box trays of vegetables and just eat that, right, the whole day. I remember when I went to, um, the airplane or when I was traveling to China, normally I would get constipated. I would get travelers, not diarrhea, I would, I would get travelers diarrhea too, but I, the main thing was as soon as I landed with the airplane food and all that, I would be constipated for days, like two to three days max. But it would be so uncomfortable. So the, there was one time as I became more health conscious, I decided to bring a tray of vegetables on and literally, after I devoured that box, the next day I landed, when I woke up, I had, again, complete evacuation, amazing, you know, shit, and um, it felt amazing. So the first thing you want to do is you want to eat raw vegetables. Why? Because they are alive with, digest with enzymes, which support your enzymatic activity that your body probably doesn't have from eating all that dead food. Um, and then it also gives you the fiber that your body needs to flush out and to really get rid of the... Uh, the junk in there, okay? So the vegetable tray is just the starting point. I recommend it because it's the easiest for people to do. Quite frankly, I like to make my own vegetable tray, meaning I get rainbow carrots, I get some uh, organic cherry tomatoes or a higher loom tomatoes. Um, I get, you know, just different types of raw vegetables. I make it myself, I eat it with nuts. And when I eat those, my digestion is clean, clear, and connected. So that's the first step, all right? The day before, eat a ton of vegetables, okay? And if you have trouble eating raw vegetables, throw them in your smoothie, blend that up, and just chug it. But I love the taste of raw vegetables. They're good. Um, just be careful with the dip because that's where it might get you, okay? The dip might mess up your digestion. So try to make your own sauce as clean as possible. Remember, no inflammatory vegetable oils in those dips, hopefully. But even even in that case, I remember when I ate it, I read the ingredients. I'm like, ah, this is not that bad. And it, it did turn out so bad. As long as you're – because the ratio is like eight, nine to one or eight to two, meaning out of that whole box of tray of vegetables, you're ne pretty much negating that bit of dip that you ate, Okay. So that's the first step. Number two, that night, make sure you get enough sleep, okay? Sleep before 1030, harmonize your body with the circadian rhythms because once you get enough sleep, your body can finally repair itself and use its energy towards fixing your digestion. And then number three, the first thing you do in the morning is you want to drink some, hot, not the hot, like very hot water, but it's between warm and hot, meaning it's just enough where you can chug it it's hot enough where you can still chug it, but it's not like lukewarm, okay? It has to be like warm enough, close to hot, where it's still bearable, meaning that midpoint, because you want it to relax your stomach lining and then allow your bowels to just like relax and flush things out. And then the fourth, okay, actually one more thing about the hot water. Ideally, if you wanna make it, when you wanna feel even better, drink ginger lemon tea, meaning I made, some, I made a video on how to detox your body and I discuss how to make the ginger lemon tea. Basically, you take out a, no a knob, like a bit of half a thumb size of ginger, chop it up, boil half a, cu half a cup of water in there first, get the juices going, and then fill the rest of the half up with cold filtered water so that you make it warm or like relatively still hot. You don't want it too hot to kill the lemon, but we're gonna squeeze some lemon juice in there for the electrolytes, okay? so. Electro, uh, lemon has an alkalizing effect on your body. Ginger helps circulation. So you're, you're, you're literally circulating your body with hydrating compounds, which is muy bien, okay? So ginger lemon tea, I recommend. If you don't wanna do that, I mean, if you're gonna go out and buy a box of vegetables anyways, or tray, uh, the tray of vegetables, you might as well just pick up some ginger and some lemon while you're at it and do this. Um, but if not, you can use, tolerate, get as much, 
get hot water, warm water, hot water around enough where you can still chug it and sprinkle some uh, Celtic sea salt in there for, or for, the vitamin, for the minerals. Because if you're just drinking filtered water, that can be slightly acidic on your body. So you want to throw some Celtic sea salt or some Himalayan pink salt in there. Enough where it just has that enough of a, a, a slight salt taste so that you can flush out your body as well with, with the water, okay? And then once you've done that, as soon as you wake up in the morning, you should have you should be drinking enough water. And first thing in the morning, you should be drinking at least half a liter to a liter of water, just guzzling it down because your body is in a dehydrated state. So you should be doing that anyways. But to spice it up, that's where you add a bit of hot water to it or you drink the ginger lemon tea, okay? And then fourth step, be prepared to sit on the toilet for half an hour, okay? I'm serious. The reason why we aren't able to poop fully is because we don't give our body time to relax and open up. And if you're trying to rush to work, you're tightening up your digestion. You're not allowing your body to just relax and yield and open up. So that day when I had my complete evacuation, even though I slept like five, six hours, I just sat there, I'm like, we're gonna poop it all out today. We're gonna poop it all out. Because I ate a bunch of, I think Chipotle that day and or something, I ate a lot, a lot of something. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna sit here and I was just breathing, which is the next step. I just sat there and I brought my intention, my, my, my attention, my willpower into my digestion. And I just, just breathe with my eyes closed because you wanna close off your senses and just get into your body. And I sat there for like literally half an hour and I shed everything out, okay? Like literally, best feeling ever when you have a complete evacuation. And um, yeah, the next step after that, um, you this is kind of interchangeable in terms of breathing during your, your, your poop, like during, while you're sitting in the toilet. Typically I meditate before or after I, after I drink my water, so after I try to poop. So I have one poop session and I know that I'm not completely evacuated if I eat a lot. So I meditate and through deep breathing and expanding my gut and breathing chi and prana into my gut, it stimulates peristalsis and I end up having my second and my third poop right after, okay? So typically, I, if I'm really congested, really constipated, I poop once. But if I'm lucky and I do my meditations correctly, I'm not a rush meaning I don't rush my meditation, I'm actually breathing deep and I relax into my body, then I have my second and third poop like halfway through my meditation, okay? So that's my story. You know, typically, you know, if I overeat and I'm constipated, I'll still poop once through breathing, exercising, breathing exercises, meditation and drinking enough water. I have my second and my third poop. Um, if I'm really stuck, then I have to wait like two to three days for all of it to clear out, meaning, to, for the backup to you know fully flush out. So the last thing I'm gonna share with you guys is no stress, okay? Each time you stress out, your cortisol increases, your digestion decreases, okay? Each time your cortisol increases, stress hormones increase, digestion decreases. So if you're watching something, I remember when I was watching the UFC during my dinner, I felt so tense and tight that I couldn't digest. Like it just, I literally felt my stomach like just but okay, this is video is getting kind of long winded, but um, that's all I wanted to share with you guys today. The pooping essentials, how to fix your digestion. Hopefully that was good. The main keys is eliminate the toxic chemicals from your diet, eat living food, raw vegetables, whole foods, eat that for, if, you, if you've been constipated for quite some time, eat that for a few days up to a week and you should clear up no problem. You might want to uh, add some fasting in there where you don't eat anything in the morning and just drink that ginger lemon tea and maybe just uh, a clean whole vegetables and just fast on that, allow your body to do its own work. And then the next morning you should be able to poop out pretty, pretty regularly, okay? So guys, it's Kevin with Optimize Essentials. I hope you like that. I know this video was kind of long, but um, if you want some more videos like this or if you need me to cover something, let me know in the comments down below. Um, give this video a thumbs up, share it with someone. I would really appreciate it. And that is it. Stay tuned for the binge eating, uh, eating disorders, and emotional eating, stress eating, whatever it's going to be called. Stay tuned for that. And have a wonderful day, guys. Stay constipation free. Peace.